Hi everybody, welcome to another video. So in this video we are going to swap out the CPU from an i3 to an i5. So first things first, we want to remove our battery. Next, there's going to be 10 screws that we want to remove. So by the way, the uh, specific model for the for the CPU. So the original what's what's uh, in it right now is an Intel Core i3 2350M, and the replacement is going to be an i5 2410M. In terms of performance, just a little bit of an improvement. I got the new CPU used from eBay for $15 with a with free shipping. So I feel like it's worth it. Plus it'll be good practice. Also towards the end of the video I'm going to I'm going to put up the uh, screenshots of CPU Z and the task manager to show you the a little bit of the speed and the specs of the uh, the new CPU compared to the old one Don't forget to remove the DVD drive. So once you remove some of the screws, you can just pull it straight out. Pretty simple stuff. I think you guys are going to enjoy uh, working on a laptop like this if you have the same model. Uh, they made it really easy for us to change the RAM and the hard drive or SSD. Uh, but since we're changing the CPU, we have to uh, take out all these screws and stuff. So. The RAM is just a simple pop out. I don't know if you saw my other video, but uh, in the other video, we swapped out the hard drive with an SSD. So that was a quick video. All right, next, there are some more screws here. So there's five more screws. All right, now that we want, we have all the screws removed, we can now use the opener. So let's see how loose it is. Oh, well, it's pretty loose. So it's actually not that bad. I thought it was gonna be tight and we would have to like really 
use our plastic tool here to push it open. Uh, but looks like it is pretty loose. All right. So this laptop has a lot of plastic also, so a little bit banged up. But it is a pretty old laptop. I've had it for more than uh It's about it's it's been about at least 5 years for sure. And then upgrading it to a Windows 10 and then all that stuff, so All right. I was actually expecting a fan, but I was thinking more of a, a desktop. So this has a heat sink. So the fan is all the way over here connected to the uh, the heat sink here. So I'm just gradually going to unscrew the heat sink. I'm giving you guys a better camera angle. It's loose. So I'm just going to pull it up gently. Boom. There we go. A lot of uh, thermal paste, so... So yeah, I am using rubbing alcohol. Makes it a lot easier. So far so good. Alright, now once once it's dry, I'm going to, well I have to kind of clean out the, um, the replacement CPU. Like I said, I got it used from eBay, so I guess uh, they did not clean the thermal paste off. Alright. Okay, so we just have to unlock this i3 CPU. So there's a screw there and there's actually a symbol that shows it as unlocked. So I just uh, turn the screw and then I can just uh, lift this off and there we go. So you definitely want to remo uh, remember how the CPU is placed. Cool. So here's the new CPU. I'm just going to gently push it down a little bit. Okay, let's see if that's uh, tight enough. Let's see here. And let me just push it down a little bit more. All right, we are secured. Now that the i5 CPU is in the socket, I'm going to bring out some of the good old Best Buy Thermal Paste Insignia. Pretty good price, especially for uh, something like this. Uh, this is not a gaming laptop, so I don't think I need anything fancy in terms of thermal paste. So I'm kind of a rookie with uh, you know, doing more thermal paste, so take it easy on me. I'm probably going to practice more too. That's why uh, it's good to start off practicing on a old computer where the components are cheap. Now I'm going to screw back in this heatsink. It's going to give a little bit of a turn for each screw just so that the thermal paste will uh, evenly distribute itself gradually. A little bit here, a little bit there. 
Also, just kind of make sure not to over tighten these screws. All right, now that is good to go. Now we can put back the cover, the bottom cover. So, oh yeah, one thing to definitely keep in mind, we wanna slip the SSD or hard drive connector in this hole right here. Gotta make sure that, there we go. Let's close it up. So here's the old i3, good old i3 CPU. All we gotta do now is put back these screws. Should be safe to put back the optical drive. Boom. Now we can put back the SSD as well. Or if you have a hard drive, hard drive or SSD. Go. Alright, let me just make sure everything is pushed down. Alright, let's put back the RAM. I did order um, extra RAM as well. Because uh, this thing right now is 6 gigabytes when I first uh, ordered, got it. Uh, so I ordered, um, well it was by set. So for 15 bucks with free shipping, $15 it was uh, 8 gigs of RAM. So from 6 gigs I will be upgrading this to an 8 gigabyte as well. Once you start uh, tinkering around computers and uh, upgrading stuff, you kind of get addicted. So gradually, I've been improving the specs on this computer. It was a Windows 7 OEM license, upgraded to Windows 10. And then after that, we upgraded the hard drive to an SSD. And then now it's the CPU from an i3 going to an i5. And then I'm going to be doing the RAM as well in, the, in a future video. So it's kind of uh it's kind of fun. I'm trying not to uh tinker around with it too much cuz you know. But this is a, uh, you know, it has cheap parts, so it's good to practice on. In terms of performance, uh I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but the i5 that I just put in um it's going to be an improvement compared to the i3, but it's not going to be a lot. It's not going to be like a huge improvement. So, you know, but it's still going to have um, improvement in terms of specs. They were released on the same year. 2011, I believe, both the i3 and the i5. Uh, I believe the i3 was released on the first quarter and then... Oh, no, sorry. The i5 was released on the first quarter. The i3 was released in the fourth quarter uh, the specific model so 
All right. Okay, so let us test this. So there's something I wanted to show everybody. Let's make sure that the computer is reading the new CPU right off the bat. If it doesn't, um, I'll show you how to uh, to scan for hardware changes. So let's run CPU Z. Okay, surprisingly, it actually recognizes CPU right off the bat. So that is great. It's reading it as an i5. So just a heads up. So if it doesn't read it, if it doesn't read the new CPU, what you can do is you can go into device manager, processors, and then you can just right click scan changes. And then you can just restart your computer and usually that would do it so that the, uh, the computer will recognize the new CPU. But um, I guess I got lucky or something because it recognized it on the first boot. So that is good. So here's a comparison with the i3 and i5. Utilization right off the bat, I wasn't even doing anything um, before and the i3 was already being utilized 80 something percent. So which is crazy. The i5 is just chilling at like 6%. So hope everybody enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Take it easy.